This is the 1.6 gallon Crane Wellington toilet. Introduced around 1993 or 1984, this was the 1.6 gallon alternative to the 3.5 Crane Wellington. And it's definitely one of the more interesting toilets of the time alongside the 1.6 gallon Crane High one. Ironically, in the next stall. But honestly, I see this being a lot better than the Heimer in, in many ways, and we'll see why. Starting off with the overall design of the ball, it's very basic, similar to the Heimer. It's got a square base compared to the more round base of the Heimer, which is a bit interesting. Track passages are kind of almost similar, but I've noticed these clogs a lot less, even though the trackway is almost identical to the Heimer of the era. The trackway opening is very similar to the high mod. However, you can tell the design of the opening is a little bit more refined. The siphon unit's right there. And it has slightly angled jets, although not as much as the high mod. The flush is a bit weird sometimes. Like, it looks swirly, but at the same time, it's more straight down sometimes. The jets on these tend to be a little bit more defective compared to the high mods, and you'll see when we flush it. It's time for a flush. With this particular one, you can definitely tell the pressure is mostly all the way up, as it's pretty strong. And as you also notice, the jets are a little bit more unaligned. I guess that's a common defect for this generation of Whirlton, but we'll flush it again and you'll see what I mean. See, it's a bit weird. The other weird thing is that this thing, while it's a siphonic toilet, acts more like a pressure assist. However, this particular one siphons a little bit more compared to some other ones seen. But this is mostly siphonic with a pressure assist kind of flush. It's the flush is very weird, to say the least, but it's also pretty good. The Bowens itself is alright, but I definitely think the high one definitely wins the Bowens factor. The jets are a little bit all over the place, and considering they're a little bit more defective, they don't really hit the back rim that much, but towards the front and all, it's not bad, per se. And that is the 1.6 gallon Crane Whirlton. Definitely a pretty interesting toilet, and I definitely think a lot better than the High Mott in some aspects compared to others. Now, it's time to grade it. Starting off with the overall design of the Crane Whirlton from the 1.6 gallon era, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't really like it that much. I honestly like the more modern look of the 1.6 gallon Crane High Mott, but that's just me personally. The square bases just kind of throws me off. It makes me think of a toilet from the 80s or 90s. And I get that this was from the 90s, to be fair. But in the 2000s, it looks a little bit weird to see in a modern bathroom. But it could also be a worse design overall. It gets a 5. I'm going to be real with you here. The quality control of these are pretty bad. <laughs> like, much worse than the 1.6 gallon high mod. The most common problem with these are the defective rim jets. They are all over the place and it's very inconsistent from Walton to Walton from this time. Sometimes you get jets that just spray all over the place. Sometimes you might get one that actually flushes in the way it's supposed to. And even sometimes you might even get one with no pull rinse. Yes, even though this is one of the better flushing toilets of the time, the back rinse can be pretty bad. It gets a free and quality control. As for design consistency, I definitely think this is a lot more consistent than the 1.6 gallon Crane High Mod. I think there was a, a square base version like the one seen here, and, and that's the most common version. And I think there might be one with a rounded base design that flushes the exact same, but I definitely think this is a lot more consistent. There may have been a bl blowout style one, but I don't really know much about that. I'm only really seeing the, the normal siphonic ones like this. Overall, I definitely think the scores of A in consistency. The trapway design is a little bit more concerning, but I definitely think it's a lot more flexible compared to the high mod. The high mod just looks like a mess. This looks almost the same, but it's definitely a lot more flexed out. I definitely noticed these clock a lot less because of the slightly better trapway design, but still it scores a 5.
I might be a little bit biased on this one, but I think this might have the best flush of a 1.6 gallon flushometer toilet I've ever seen. Even on lower pressure, these still have tend to have pretty good flushes. On higher pressure though, like the one I'm showing in this video, the flushes are absolutely insane. I never thought I'd see the day I would give a 1.6 gallon toilet a rating of a 9 on flush, but this toilet earns it. Personally, I notice these shred a lot less and struggle a lot less too. Though, not by that much of a margin. I occasionally sometimes see some shreds in these, but definitely not as frequent as compared to the high mod version. And these definitely don't clog a lot either. So overall, they get earned a 6. Well, these can sometimes clog. Compared to the high mod, these things clog a lot less though. In fact, I don't ever recall seeing one clog, and I definitely have not clogged one myself. These definitely perform a lot better than the high mods, despite having almost somewhat the same trapway design, but definitely a lot more flexed out. And I definitely think it helps overall. It scores a 7. The bow rinse, let's be real here, is definitely not the greatest. It's also not the worst either. Sometimes you might have a defective one that doesn't have any back rinse, and sometimes that the flush is so powerful it probably rinses it well, but compared to the high mod, it definitely rinses a lot worse compared to it. Overall, it gets a 5. Survivability is definitely a lot higher than the high mod. I rarely see these replaced, and even if I do, it's only a few that get replaced. Compared to the high mod, which is definitely getting a lot more replaced constantly compared to the Whirlton versions, the Whirlton is definitely the winner in survivability and gets a 7. Now let's talk about the overall value. If it wasn't for some of the defective parts of it, like the ramjet's going crazy and sometimes not having the greatest rinse, this toilet could definitely be a lot better. This thing already has an insane flush for a 1.6 gallon toilet, and it definitely performs a lot better compared to the high mod version. While technically this toilet is definitely better than the high mod, some of the quality control aspects definitely kind of bring this thing down a bit. If it wasn't for that, this definitely would have been a better toilet for a 1.6 gallon toilet. But because of the defects and the jet ram jets being very inconsistent, it scores a 6 overall. And the final score of the Crane Walton toilet from the 1.6 gallon era is a 61 out of 100. There are some things that are better about this toilet compared to the high mod, but there's also things worse compared to the high mod. While this toilet is technically better than the high mod, especially in terms of performance and stuff, this thing has some very poor quality control that brings it down a little bit. While I always prefer the Worldtons over the Highmonts from this era, let's be real here. If it wasn't for the poor quality control, this could easily be one of the best toilets of the 1.6 gallon era, especially for flashometers. But as it is, it's a pretty interesting toilet from the time, but the quality control is easily some of its worst from Crane.